All right, so it's starting to rain out here. I'm taking a little bit of a break and I was just kind of thinking about what conclusions I can actually draw from this test that I'm doing. You know, it's no surprise to anybody that steel case ammo is not the best, but I never realized exactly how bad it truly is. If you've never seen firsthand the difference between good ammo and bad ammo, check this out. Hopefully it'll be illustrative. Let's go. All right, we made it to the range, but if you can't tell, we might get a little rain here. I guess we're gonna go for it. We're just gonna get set up. Hopefully it doesn't rain mid shoot. Let's find out, here we go. Target is set up out here. It's just a touch shy of 100. And we're gonna go back, get set up, and we'll shoot a group of tool ammo steel case first. And then we'll follow it up with some sick nasty hand loads. All right, the rifle is an Anderson lower with a BCA 16 inch upper, all stock internals from the factory. And we're shooting tool ammo steel case. Let's do it. Oh, sight mark um, Core TX. All right, so I know people are gonna ask, it's freaking dumb, but I have to load one at a time off the mag, take the mag out because the mag gets in the way of my shooting position. It's too tall, it won't let me shoot off the bipod from prone. So I gotta come in here, put the mag in, cycle around in, drop the mag back out, and get back to shooting. Okay, that one ended up back on the right. And another one. Wow. That one was center line about five inches low. Crazy. I used up a couple of the steel case rounds that I had hoped to put on paper because I switched the scope back over. It wasn't accurate. I had to bring the target in, get on paper, whatever. Um, we still got a few rounds on target. I'll count how many. I think it's enough to uh, to have you know enough data enough enough shots to work with to make some conclusion so uh here is the target and let's count up how many rounds actually went on target that is one two three four five six seven rounds on target um and we're one two three four five a little less than five inches wide and one two three four a little less than five inches tall. So at 100 yards, we're just short of 100 yards. So if we expanded this out to 100 yards, it'd probably be a five MOA group, um, given that the group would spread out over the next 10 yards, about 90 yards out here. Um, so let's call that five inches by five inches with seven rounds of steel case. Trust me, I am doing my best to put an accurate group down here. But while I'm not perfect, I'm not pulling those five MOA at 100 yards. That's, uh, I think that's a group we can rely on, is the bullets and the gun and not me. So anyways, draw from that what you will. Let's try the next ammo. Okay, there's a few things that need to be said right now. We just shot steel case, which measured in my chamber has over an eighth of an inch of jump to the rifling based on the ogive measurement. These are my hand loads. They are very different. They're 77 grain instead of 55 grain. They're boat tail hollow point instead of FMJ. And they're loaded to 20 thou off the lands of the rifle. That said, they are too long to fit in a factory mag. So obviously, I'm not saying that these rounds are the correct thing to load into your mag. I'm not saying everyone should shoot these. All I'm doing is trying to test the difference between factory steel case ammo versus hand loads at 20 thou off the lands. In order to do so, I'm gonna have to feed these into the rifle one at a time and I don't have a sled to do it with. So it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Now, what conclusions we can draw from this? Since we're changing so many variables at once, I would be hesitant to say that we can conclusively decide any one thing based off of this. But what I'm hoping we may see is a difference in some type of consistency. Remember, we don't care about accuracy because where it hits relative to the other one, we can adjust the scope for that. I don't care about that. What I wanna see is if there's a difference in consistency at 20 thou. 
since they don't even fit in the mag we're just going to do this one test for my own curiosity and uh, you can draw your own conclusions so let's shoot all right we're going to go ahead without changing anything at all on the gun and shoot a couple of these hopefully they're still near the center of the paper in terms of accuracy but again all we really care about is consistency so let's find out how that goes all right this stuff's gotta get out of the way there free advertising for mid-south by the way you're welcome mid-south mm, that feels good okay we are too right too high They're about a quarter of an inch away from each other, which is substantially better than the first two shots with steel case. I will say that, but two shots is hardly a group that we can use for any kind of decision making. Bug hole that one. So we have two in one hole and one about a quarter of an inch away. All right, we got about a half inch group so far. The fifth shot, I think most precision shooters would consider a five shot group relatively representative. Let's send it. I think I bug hold that one with another one. Okay. Chamber's clear. Gun's unsafe. Let's go check it out. I can already tell through the scope that the group is night and day from the steel case. But I want to say a few things here before people get the wrong idea or before this gets like misconstrued. Um, first of all, the rounds that I'm shooting now don't even fit in a mag. So that makes them kind of useless for practical purposes. Um, that's not to say that you can't precision load mag length rounds for the AR. It is doable. So this is just one test for my own fun. Um, I love shooting precision, so I just wanted to kind of play with this and see what it does. Um, I'm relatively new to the AR platform, so I was just messing around, right? Um, but I think it does illustrate just how inconsistent, um, especially cheap ammo off the shelf. I mean, Steelcase is pretty notorious for being like basically garbage. So I don't think anybody out there is gonna be surprised that Steelcase is shooting badly. But until I actually did this, I didn't realize that if nothing changes and you pull the trigger with steel case you're gonna have a five inch wide spread at 90 yards 100 yards versus some good ammo that could be a one inch spread like a one moa group right so to be honest with you if i hadn't done this test i'd probably still be blaming myself for missing shots at 100 yards that i should have hit i didn't realize exactly how dramatic the difference can be so let's check this out and the big reveal that's a five shot group Two here, two here, one there. Same distance, same scope, same gun, minutes apart from the other group. Um, that is about one inch wide. I'll measure it when I get home and probably three quarters of an inch tall. Um, so that is a MOA group or maybe a little better, although we're at 90 yards. So to be fair, we'll probably call that a one MOA group. I'm gonna shoot a few more rounds because we did do uh, we did do seven with the steel case, so let's do seven with the hand loads. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll just shoot some more of them just for fun because I loaded them up and we'll see how close that group can stay as I add more to it. As I have said and will continue to say throughout this video, be careful exactly what conclusions you draw from this. I'm not saying that one or the other is better. There's a lot of variables that are changing between the two um, ammos. So we're not testing only distance from the lands. We're testing you know, whatever, steel case, the case volume could be different, the powder's different, blah, blah, blah. But the results are so st astoundingly different that I think we can tell for sure that these are shooting differently than the steel case. Let's get another one downrange. See if I can keep this group going. Come on, baby. Not terrible. Let's send another one. This will put us up to seven shots on paper, which will match the seven shots we did 
from the steel case tool ammo. Woo, there's seven shots. Let's keep going. They're pretty much all in the same hole, so I'm gonna shoot the next few and I'll cut through the video, so. That shot didn't feel good the whole time and it did not land well. Wow. So, literally got sweat like dripping into my eyes while I'm trying to shoot those last few. Holy crap. Fatiguing as a shooter. Um, first five were really, really good. And then the group started opening up vertically. Uh, you know, it's, I'm not gonna sit here and blame it on something else, but you know, factors that change, the uh, barrel started heating up. I don't typically shoot. You know, I, I shot the tool ammo first. I shot seven of those. Um, and then we sent five hand loads that shot great. And then things started opening up vertically. So I wonder maybe if barrel heat wasn't at least part of the factor. The fact that I was like drowning in my own sweat in my eyeballs, trying to look through a scope probably doesn't help much either, but whatever. I'm the one that pulled the trigger and uh, nothing about my setup changed. So we'll say that I uh, messed up those last few, but let's see what the difference is. 14 hand loads versus uh, seven of the tall ammo. I think the difference is still pretty clear. There it is. That's, uh, well, it's about an inch and a half vertical and an inch and a quarter to an inch horizontal. Um, definitely had more vertical spread than horizontal spread. So again, like I said, kind of wonder about barrel heat and barrel temperature, but yeah, that's probably just me. All right, so that's a seven shot group of tool ammo from here to here, up and down, about five inches by five inches. And that is a 14 shot group of hand loads. The first five were like right here. Uh, coming out of the Anderson lower 16 inch Bear Creek upper, all stock, stock trigger, blah, blah, blah. Uh, with a sight mark, Core TX 3 to 12 on it at about 90 yards. So you guys decide what that means. But for me, it means I'm going to be a whole lot more forgiving on myself when I miss shots with steel case. <laughs> but steel case is cheap. It shoots. It goes boom. It's fun to shoot, so whatever. I'm not saying you can't buy steel case. I'm not even saying I won't buy steel case because I definitely still will. Um, it's a lot cheaper and a lot faster than hand loading. Eh. One thing I'd be real curious about it would be to take some tool ammo and pull the bullets and weigh the powder charges and see how consistent the powder charges are, weigh the cases maybe, or uh, measure case volume. But I don't know, maybe somebody's already done that. If you guys know of anyone who's done that kind of testing with tool ammo, I'd be curious to see how consistent or inconsistent it is to give some perspective as to what exactly is causing that massive grouping. Now I know that it's got at least an eighth of an inch jump to the lands in my rifle, which I personally think is probably the vast majority of the culprit for that spread. But it could be other things too, and since I haven't pulled apart a bunch of tool ammo and checked for consistency, I just can't tell you exactly which variable it is that could be causing the difference. So draw your own conclusions and uh just be forgiving on your shots that you missed with steel case because it definitely spreads out there's no doubt about that and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and i'll catch you later peace homies